Bonjour, mademoiselles. Today we are talking about something that is going to become quite relevant in a few days. Because Blizzard has just tuned the thing you will have to be clicking in just a few days in Mythic Plus. I am talking about the anima powers being granted by the new Guardians. Now, now it's very likely that in just a matter of days after the release of Mythic Plus you will get your nice and tidy guides about what to click in every situation, which is the best in slot, the best anima power in slot for each of the specs and whatnot. That is very likely. But at the very least, for some of the specs, these are going to fall down to preference. Because it could be, for example, for healers, you're getting buffed in your healing, you're getting buffed in your defensiveness, you're getting buffed in your secondary stats. A DPS could get buffed in single target damage or it could get buffed in AoE damage. So even though there is likely going to be a list, a priority list, quite a few of these are going to be down to preference. This is not going to be to the same, I guess, level of importance as things like talent rows, right? Talent rows are much more pick this every time, period. This one, on the other hand, is going to give you a bit more leeway in your choices. The first one, not quite relevant, to be fair, the Bottle of Sanguine Ichor is getting a buff to the actual healing it's going to do and a very slight nerf to the amount of damage it's going to do. This was okay before and the main reason you were going to pick this as a healer was also because of the added free damage. This is one of the things that fit the example I just made. It's a very good thing for healers to have the option to choose powers that can also do damage when it comes to Mythic Plus. Broken Mirror was very powerful. It was protecting you for a whooping 25% of magical damage. It's got the nerf to only 15% of magical damage reduction. This is effectively a revert because it was already previously at 15%. Blizzard tried it at 25 and then just said, no, that's a bit too much. One of the first important changes was to one of the strongest ones you can get, regardless of your class and role. So it's even more important. Champion's Brand. This was the one that, while you stayed above 70% health, so very valuable for healers and, and DPSers, you were gaining 8% haste or crit, whichever one was higher. And this could stack, by the way. You could get multiples of this one in a single run, meaning you could just get some 16% free haste, for example. The change that is coming is that haste is no longer there. Haste has been replaced by mastery and percentage is gone. It is instead now being replaced by a fixed number. In this case, 210. Now, given the current rating of secondaries, that is roughly going to be some 7% crit. Mastery is going to be even weirder because different specs have different values of their mastery. So this is going to have different values based on how much you're valuing your mastery as a spec. It's definitely overall worse, because generally speaking, there are more specs that are going to value haste more highly. So this is definitely a hit to the power. A pretty powerful tank power has gotten just slightly more powerful, crumbling bulwark. Your versatility is increased by 5%, which is okay, but also... Upon entering combat, your damage taken is reduced by 40% for 4 seconds. So this is one of the very important parts of Mythic Plus. You must have heard this a dozen times if you watch my video about the importance of the tank meta of jumping in, using your cooldowns, and when the cooldowns run out, you fuck off and kite. This power is basically doing just that. It's just making you even more tanky as soon as you enter combat. This is particularly powerful for tanks that have more troubles at the start of a pool, like Blood Death Knight. This is very good for Blood Death Knight. Dagger of Necrotic Wounding, the necrotic inspired one, gets a very minor buff, not really anything major. Dripping Fang gets slightly nerfed. This is also Okay, gaining 5% leech, increasing up to 20% based on your missing health instead of 25. It's, you know, it's a cool, self-sufficient type of power, but you're never happy, especially if you're a DPS, if you have to go for something like this, rather than just getting straight up power upgrades. Gavel of Judgment is also one of the other inevitable nerfs. This was the free stun. Your auto attacks call the Gavel of Judgment upon your target, stunning them for 5 seconds. That's been nerfed to 2. Now, one of the more OP powers added has gotten removed. Huntsman's Muzzle had this uh, similar to Torghast power of when you attack a new creature, they are silenced for 4 seconds. This is just ridiculous. 
basically every tank guaranteeing to, to stack up all of the silenceable enemies on top of himself every time. This is getting removed. Huntsman's Horn now is going to give you 70% movement speed for 6 seconds when you enter combat. Now, this is very bad because it just shows you how hard some spec have it sometimes, but this is also pretty powerful for DKs and it shows you how bad it is. That something as small as a movement speed buff could even be a, you know, a, a proper useful thing for a tank spec. This is also pretty good for druids as well. They don't have to talent into the charge and they don't have to use their second charge to go into the pack because that way they can save it for what it's actually useful, which is the interrupt part of the charge. Imperfect Panacea has gotten changed to Regenerative Fungus. Previously, it used to automatically dispel a random disease, curse or magic effect every 20 seconds, which is very bad, to be fair. When there is a very bad effect like this one, disease, curse or magic, generally speaking, you want to get rid of this immediately. You don't want to rely on this random proccing effect. Of course, it's very powerful to get a free dispel, for example, of Infectious Rain of Stradama, right? Unfortunately, this happens every 20 seconds, so if the timing is wrong, this isn't really gonna do much of anything. So now instead it's getting changed to taking damage heals you for 1.5% of your maximum health. This is of course going to be either very good or very bad, possibly in between. I know, very bold take, but we have to see the proc rate, you know? What is the grace period between hits in which this can proc? Of course it cannot be uncapped, otherwise you would basically heal if you're getting hit by 30 enemies at once, but we'll have to see. Unfortunately, another one of the very, very powerful powers is going to get nerfed. This was an auto-pick most of the time for all of the healers having any sort of struggles with mana in Mythic Plus, Overflowing Chalice. Healing a target has a chance to generate lose mana, which can be collected to restore 10% of your maximum mana. Initially, this was 10% with 6 procs per minute, meaning you were gaining 60% of your mana back every minute, making you effectively never go out of mana. Then it was nerfed to 3 procs per minute, so you were still gaining 30% of your mana back every minute, which is still significant and very powerful. Now it has been nerfed to regenerating 6% of maximum mana with 2 procs per minute. So it's roughly going to be 12% maximum mana. We went from 60% of what it was originally intended to 12%. So one-fifth of the original addition into the game. This is now likely going to be much less worthwhile. 12% of mana every minute, you know. It's one of the it's it's basically a pretty good potion without having to actually use a potion slot. You could be a healer and use this. So you can use, for example, an intellect potion or a DPS potion to just do more damage, I guess. But you would be happier with things like secondary stat or straight up DPS powers. Talking about secondary stats, very good change to pedestal of utter hubris. While you are above 90% health, your healing done is increased by 15%. This has now changed to your haste is increased by 12% while in combat, but you burn for 5% of your maximum health every 3 seconds. This is a chad power, because 12% haste is not only going to increase your healing, but it's also going to increase your damage. Taking damage to yourself is not too big of a deal if you can get that much haste, and also this goes to, to pair with the champion's brand. Champion's brand just lost the haste buff in place of mastery, so now the haste buff goes in here. Another utility damage reduction power has got the nerf. Pendant of the Martyr used to get 15% AoE damage reduction around you to your allies. Now it's getting nerfed to 10%. It's still pretty good. Uh, the only problem I have with this is people getting triggered by the range. I myself as a shaman get triggered when people stay in Africa effectively staying away from healing rain, staying away from chain heal, staying away from spirit link totem, this one would be the same thing. You would have the tank pick this one up, get AUV damage reduction, and then the healer and the two range DPS stay too far away anyways, and this power is useless. Another one of the strongest powers in Mythic Plus is getting removed, indeed. Don't get too triggered because the previous powers were so powerful that it was impossible to think they were staying like this. Raging Battle Axe. Damaging a target below 30% health has a high chance to cause them to suffer 10% increased damage taken from you stacking up to 3 times. That's 30 
50% more damage in execute phase. Come on, even you have to admit this was just way too powerful. Instead, it's gotten changed to damaging a target below 30% health has a high chance to hurl a raging battle axe at the target, dealing a bunch of physical damage. The procs are 12 times per minute, so we'll have to see just how much damage it does. I can guarantee you it's nowhere near as much damage as you would have done with the previous one, but at least it still gives you something to take on tyrannical weeks for boss damage. That's a thing. Another very annoying nerf in terms of quality of life, because this one wasn't even power. Satchel of the Hunt. You grant all allies within 20 yards an additional 30% move speed. This is a very powerful support power, right? 30% move speed makes you move faster between mobs, makes you kite much more easily, makes you dodge mechanics much more easily. 20 yards is actually decent enough that as a healer, for example, or even a mindful range DPS, you can position yourself in a way to hit most of your party. Now it's gotten nerfed, first of all, to only be in combat, so that's already worse, and number two, to only have a 12 yard range. So generally speaking, the ranged players are gonna buff the ranged players and the, the melee players are gonna buff the melee players, unless you are really stacked together. Self-embalming kit has also got the nerf, the self-feeling you receive has got the nerf to 50% instead of 75%. Then we have a surprising change, which is a nerf, but it's still kind of okay. It's not gotten as nerfed as the Raging Battle Axe. This is the Siege Breaker's stand. Previously, it used to give you 6% damage when you were standing still, stacking up to three times. That's like, as long as you stand still, you're gaining 18% damage in just three seconds. That's very, very good. Now it's got the nerf to 4% every second, and after standing still for three seconds, you gain 10% extra armor. So that's kind of okay. Signet of Bolstering has also gotten a nerf. Previously, when enemies were dying within 40 yards of you, they would increase your damage by 5%, stacking up 5 times. Now it's got a nerf to 3%, stacking up 5 times. Another big nerf to stabilizing Diamond Alembic, standing still stores healing equal to 5% of your current health every 1 second, up to your maximum health. When you move, this energy is expended. This is very cool because it, you know, it made you think big brain when you had to move and also kind of risk. Risk more as a healer because you don't want to move before the big damage comes in. So maybe there is a shitty mechanic forcing you to move and you feel bad because you wanted to keep storing that healing. Now it's going to be much less relevant because this is getting nerfed to 1.5% of your current health. So even to get to your max HP, assuming you stay very often to max HP, it's gonna take you over a minute. Something like 70 seconds to even cap at max. The fifth skull, which is your Mongo AoE ability for damage, has gotten nerfed by almost 50% in its max attack power scaling. I'm fine with this. I don't really like this very simple brain dead, keep doing damage and you're gonna get free AoE. Stygian King's Barbs also has gotten nerfed previously. When enemies strike you in melee combat, Shadow Barbs lash out, dealing 4% of your current health. Now it's going down to 2% of your current health. And lastly, one of the other powerful powers for DPSers, Volcanic Plumage, is getting nerfed slightly in the power scaling. Now, the important part to mention, because before we weren't exactly sure about where all of these powers were coming from, because they could be for multiple roles, really, now we actually know uh, for certain where do they come from, which roles do they come from. Remember, these are not random and they are not class specific, they are all role specific and guaranteed every single time. So you can pre-plan what you're going to click based on the boss, based on the affixes of the dungeon, even before entering the actual key. There are a few interesting parts. As we knew already, this has been consistent. Champion's Brand is still a multi-role type of power. The Stone Ward, which is the shield, the defensive one, is still a multi-role type of power. Because there is quite a few of them, just going over the few surprising ones that I didn't think they were going to end up that way. Tiny Dancing Shoes being given to healers is kind of weird, right? This is for DPS and it's of course very good for melee DPS when it comes to defensiveness. However, you know, for healers, this seems like a waste that are unlikely going to be to be benefiting from this, except for a very few dungeons where there is some bowmen and crossbowmen or spearmen throwing them at your healer. Another one of the weird ones I didn't expect is the fifth skull. As I said, the Mongo AoE damage padding power is actually for tanks. 
and just for tanks. That's surprising. The other surprising one as a whole is the fact that healers are getting far less defensiveness than DPSers. DPSers are really getting helped with defensives here. Powers like Vial of Desperation. Whenever you take more than 25% of your max health, you gain 50% movement speed and suffer 50% less damage for 3 seconds. It's very powerful. There are quite a few mechanics that deal quite a lot of damage over time or over a very short period of time, which will proc this and help you a lot. But healers don't get this. Or, of course, something like only the tank being able to use Pendant of the Martyr. So now, if you are a healer, you have to hug the tank if you want to benefit from this, whereas many DPS kind of get it for free, really. Lastly, Gavel of Judgment. Yes, the one that makes your auto attacks stun the target, the one that just got nerfed from 5 second stun to 2 second stun, it is actually just a healer power. This is actually kind of misleading because this is going to be better for non-Holy Paladins and non-Mistover Monks. Because Holy Paladins and Mistover Monks will be auto-attacking and attacking the enemies as part of their rotation, so basically they want to be able to choose when they stun the enemy. It will just happen. Whenever they pull the new pack and they start with their Crusader Strike, they will just land an auto-attack and stun the target. Whereas if you are, for example, a Resto Shaman or a Discipline Priest, you can just slowly walk up to the enemy at your leisure, whenever you want, and then bop him in the head with your staff and stun him whenever you want. So that is actually pretty interesting, unless you want to hate your life as a paladin and basically macro every one of your DPS buttons with a stop attack macro to not ever attack and also nerf your DPS, that power is gonna be kind of shitty for you. So these are all the powers available. I will leave the link down below for you to look them up and think about which ones you would choose even at first glance before being told or having someone else figure out which ones are the OP ones for you and whatnot. Some of these nerfs were kind of inevitable, especially the very powerful DPS ones were also expected, as well as the interrupt one, the Huntsman's muzzle, was also very expected. A little bit disappointed about the overflowing chalice. The mana nerf has gone a little bit overboard. But for the most part, I'm pretty excited about these powers and testing them out next week in Mythic Plus. Let me guys know what you think about this and these powers. For now, we can stop here. We can call this to a close. I have to, I have to leave very soon. Going down to the grocery store is next on the list. Thank you for watching the video if you enjoyed it. You should support the channel by subscribing to my courses at my online university or subscribe to this channel. See you guys soon and in the meantime, in the meantime I have to do something for my voice. It's going away. I need one of those, you know, those singers like honey drinks to keep your voice alive. Jesus Christ.